so cool. The arrival of a new M car is always big news for performance car fans, especially if it's an all new version of the legendary M3. And thanks to BMW's new even numbered coupe naming strategy, we get to say hello for the first time to an M4. And if there was ever a car that deserves an Auto Express track battle, this is it. So let's find out how the rear wheel drive straight six turbocharged M4 gets on against Audi's four wheel drive V8 RS5. With a dual clutch DCT gearbox, the BMW M4 costs £59,145. A huge array of components have been re-engineered compared to a standard 3 series and with a carbon fibre roof it weighs 1,497 kilograms. The twin turbocharged straight 6 engine produces 425 brake horsepower and 550 newton metres of torque. Offered exclusively with Audi's S-Tronic dual clutch gearbox, the RS5 costs £59,870. With Audi's Quattro all-wheel drive system, traction isn't an issue, but the RS5 weighs 1,715 kilograms. The V8 engine produces 430 brake horsepower, but with just 430 newton meters, it doesn't have as much torque as the turbocharged BMW. So I'm very excited about driving the new M4, but before we drive the BMW, let's drive the car that's probably the benchmark in the market at the moment, the Audi RS5. Obviously, still with the V8 engine that the M3's moved away from. It's got a dual clutch gearbox as well. More power than the BMW. Is it gonna be quicker around the track? Now obviously, it's not as much fun when it comes to this warming up lap. Obviously, being four wheel drive, you can't indulge in those big power slides that you can do in the BMW but it certainly doesn't feel slow in a straight line. It feels a little bit heavy on the brakes, but there's a really lovely burble on the gear shift. It does sound like a very sort of punchy, rapid, very stable, fast Audi you'd expect. So that's gonna give you some lap time, hopefully, just the sheer amount of grip the car's got. So let's just finish off this warming up lap. Even then, you just go into the corner and just as you feel the rear feel like it's starting to want to slide, then the stability control, which you can't fully turn off, starts to come into play and rein the car back in. It feels like it's working its front tyres pretty hard, but it's definitely not slow. Really good gear shift. Okay, let's come and start a flying lap. So we're going to start in second gear, out of the last corner, and then obviously there you just got so much traction as you get on the power, up to third gear, just shy of 90 miles an hour as we head into here, staying in third gear to to roll the speed in, you feel it the weight of the engine in the front axle, but it changes direction really well. Just the slightest sense of the rear starting to break away, but obviously on the throttle hard, and the diff brings everything under control. Up to the chicane, just about 115 miles an hour hard on the brakes. Again, it feels heavy on the brakes, a bit nose heavy as well. But out of that chicane, again, really good traction, fast gear shift. Not particularly brutal, but pretty fast and smooth down to third gear. I mean, this car's got lots of grip, very fast, but it's not a track car as such. You wouldn't enjoy driving this car all day on the track, track day. It's a very stable, very fast, very capable road car. And it's entertaining to an extent on the track, but it's not, it's not really good fun. It's really impressive through that high speed S's. Working the front tires hard on the exit though down to the last couple of corners. It's good on the brakes into these tight corners. And again, you really get the benefit of that traction on the exit. Up to the last corner, a bit tidy. And accelerating out of the last corner and across the line. You've gone back to a six cylinder engine from the old cars V8, but you don't feel short chains. Twin turbo, so much power. We've got the DCT dual clutch version, 
and the car sounds epic as well. A lot of it's sort of induced noise into the cabin, but it just sounds amazing. So it's the one warming up lap, putting some heat to the tyres, a little bit crazy on the sideways. <laughs> what a car! Um, and then we're going to come around and start a flying lap and see just how fast it is against the stopwatch because there's no question this is a raw, really serious M car. Now I've got all of the systems into their sportiest. So on this M1 button here, I've programmed it. So we've got the steering, the throttle, the gearbox in its sportiest setting and the traction control, speed control fully off. So let's try a flying lap. Now, in, to do a quick lap time, you've got to stop all the sidewaysy stuff and really focus on keeping it smooth. But when you do keep it smooth, it's just so well balanced. Just trailing some speed in there. Rolls into overstep, but the body control is excellent. On the power here, feeding the power in. Just the tiniest bit of oversteer on the exit, up to fourth gear, over 120 miles an hour now. Hard on the brakes into the chicane. This one's got the optional ceramic brakes and they are pretty stonky. Try to just dialing into a tiny bit of oversteer but keeping it clean on the exit. 7,000 RPM on the upshift. Seriously mightily impressive this car. Really standing on the brakes, trying to carry speed into the entry of these last left hand corners. Again, really standing on the brakes. Now here, long, long load, long load, just a little bit of oversteer, but trying to maintain the momentum on the exit. Up to fourth gear into these high speed S's. Body control is amazing through here. It all feels a fraction artificial, the way that the car is containing itself. Amazing. Really good gear shift. Third gear, trying to keep the exit speed up. Last corner. This is going to be a good lap time, I think. Trying to get the power on. Hard on the power. The BMW M4 recorded a lap time of 1 minute 09.9. The Audi RS5 Coupe recorded a lap time of 1 minute 12.2. So the BMW M4 was 2.3 seconds faster than the RS5 around our test track. With all of its settings in the sportiest mode, the engine, grip, body control and handling of the M4 is simply astonishing. This is a performance car BMW can be rightly proud of. It was even faster than the mid-engined Porsche Cayman S. And if you want to find out which one of these three is the best road car, then read our road test. If you want to see the Porsche Cayman S PDK take on the Lotus Evora S, click on the left icon. Or if you want to see the M3's baby brother, the M235i M Sport take on a classic M3 CSL, click on the right icon. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the Auto Express logo.